Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Cole's Corner. Uh, today's episode is titled The Methods to This Madness. Um, before we get started though, I have a few things I want to talk about. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for the amazing response that I got to episode one of this show. Um, I received a lot of private messages, comments, uh, and, and it was really encouraging to see uh, conversations being started as a, as a result of the, sh- of the first episode. And because uh, that's the point of this show is to get people thinking on different paths and, uh, you know, get groups of people talking about you know, new ways or, or even old ways to, to work on this puzzle, which is vastly what a lot of today's episode is going to be about, is, is the methodologies that we, we apply when we are um, working on the secret. So thank you, everybody, for, for that. Um, secondly, I, um, I want to raise a nice, toasty, warm cup of coffee here from, from Frosty Canada. Um, first winter hit just last night. Um, but I want to raise a cup to a friend that we lost recently, um, Arthur, everybody knows Arthur, uh, and if you don't, I feel sorry for you. Um, today for show and tell, I brought the leg eater that, uh, he made and, um, you know, I'm really going to miss the guy. He, he helped me personally, um, on one of the puzzles that I created for, uh, my blue sage puzzle company. Uh, he contributed some fantastic artwork. Um, and I think just to touch on him briefly for the moment, cause I know there's going to be a, you know, there's going to be a, a, memorial of sorts that that's been being planned for him. And I don't want to, I'm, I'm taking part in that. And so I don't want to, you know, give away too much, but I think one of my favorite things about Arthur was his passion for art. Um, in this day and age, it's very hard for artists of any kind to, um, you know, make it or anything like that. But that's not what he was about. He, Arthur made art for the sake of making art. And his passion for, for his, you know, his comics, Bolin and Spinoza, um, his, you know, uh, you know, I don't know how to pronounce the word, his Pinot Noirs, I think he called them. Um, but his art was just, um, it came from his heart. And everything he did came from his heart. His friendships meant everything to him. And uh, his friendship meant everything to me and a large cross-section of the community. So here's to Arthur. Um, now moving on to today's topic. You know, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of private messages from people talking about um, you know how I approach you know how how do you start this game you know um, I think there are a million different ways one can can really jump into it and I think that uh, sometimes the the jumble of methodologies and stuff like that that people see and the approaches that people get um, you know as new people and stuff like that can be kind of daunting and maybe a little bit confusing. It can be hard to understand where to kind of begin. But thankfully, because of the vagary of this puzzle, um, we're privileged to be able to to decide where we start, right? Um, So, you know, we have options. You can start with just the, you know, looking at the image, which I think a lot of people, you know, that's kind of where they they kick off at is is the visual side of things. you can start with the verse. Um, some people have read the book front to back and that's how they, you know, that's how they kind of, they want to take it all in before they start to kind of pick it all apart, um, and, and start to work on it. So this raises a few questions, you know, like what happens if you just start with the image, right? Like, and how does one even do that? Um, or what happens if you start with just the verse? Uh, now, as a kind of a caveat to this whole thing, I'm running on the assumption that we that the majority of the community at least um, sort of accepts the pairings that we have out there. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'll accept the controversy behind verse eight and and Montreal, and uh, you know I think it's 
regardless of, of, of the pairings you use, the methods are kind of the same. But for the sake of specificity, I'm going to be using, you know, the accepted pairings, mostly the ones that are already solved because you can't deny those. Um, but you can apply these methods, I think, to uh, the puzzle in general, regardless of what you believe is right or, or wrong. You know what I mean? Um, so, you know, if you... You know, like we haven't 100% determined that the whole book is is really necessary. You know what I mean? Like, it is it necessary to read it front to back, um, or can you just go straight to the actual puzzle? Obviously, given you know the litany um, of the jewels, some part of the the ex extraneous parts of the book are important, right? The the litany, as far as we can tell, gives us our immigration references. Um, among other things and tells us you know which jewels belong to which immigration groups and things like that um, so it, you know returning to the idea that you can go straight to image or verse or whatever um, you know let's let's look at jumping into just the image because I think a lot of people that's where they kick off at the paintings are fantastic and and no offense to anyone in the community, but human attention spans aren't what they used to be. And so jumping into these, you know, these poems and these vague verses, you know, is, is sort of exhausting, I think, at the start. Um, so how do you start with just the image? Well, I think probably the, the best thing you can start out looking for within the pictures is anything familiar, right? Um, you know, symbols, landmarks, uh, in, you know, like in, this, in the case of Cleveland, you've got state shapes. Uh, Chicago also had that. People look for numbers, um, you know, identifying the people within the image is something that some that a lot of people um, kind of, you know, they pursue that. They want to know who this person is. A lot of people thought that the, the lady in Boston was Christopher Columbus, right? But, of course, JJP himself denies that. Um, you know, so you look for these things. And then, you know, you try to make connections within the picture uh, between all these things, right? So let's say, let's say we're working on Cleveland because it hasn't been solved yet, hypothetically, right? This is a whole big hypothetical. With Cleveland, you know, let's say we've looked through the image a bunch and we've identified a few things. We found the state shape or what we think is the shape of Ohio uh, and we can match up kind of the main freeways and stuff like that to, to confirm that. Um, and then, of course, because we're looking at this picture from all sides, we decided to turn the picture upside down, and we see the picture of a tower in the trees, right? We identify what looks like a tower in the trees. So right there, you can start to look into things like um, towers within Ohio, right? Like even in the Googleverse that we live in now, which coincidentally is how Cleveland was solved, um, you know, you could still make these connections. And so let's say we start looking up, you know, famous towers in London or in, uh, sorry, in Ohio. Uh, and eventually you're going to get to the Terminal Tower, right, in Cleveland. And so now you've got your city. Um, within that, you can, you know, and maybe at that point you could go to the verse and start to say, you know, well, you know, there's this line that says, seek the columns for the search. Um, you know, you could start to look at uh, famous column sets within Cleveland uh, or you could even at that point make the connection to the Greek right the Greeks and the Romans were all about their co their columns they invented the three or four orders of columns that exist and uh, you know you can kind of just see how the extrapolation process works from there um, you can make your connections th with your verse and your image and then kind of you know narrow it all down um, you know and you can probably see where that's kind of going. So now, uh, conversely, you know, if you were to start with Cleveland with the verse, um, you know, it kind of requires you to... So starting with the verse, like for, for new people that are just kind of starting now, and, and maybe even for older searchers that are looking for, uh, you know, new ways to kind of look at the puzzle... Um, we're, again, going to look at this as though the pairings that we know are, you know, basically correct. And I think, like, again, the methodology of, like, how I just did that with Cleveland, you could apply that to 
you know, there's there's people with Baltimore theories, there's the St. Louis theories, uh, the moon cask. <laughs> um, you know, the way that you kind of go about this is going to kind of be the same puzzle to puzzle. But I think you're still going to find, there's a good chance that you're still going to find things within individual puzzles that you're not going to be able to apply to other puzzles, right? Um, I think that was sort of implied with this, with the gift giver's Roanoke post. Whether or not anybody puts um, any kind of uh, credibility behind those posts is sort of irrelevant in this conversation. But, you know, if you it, it inspired an idea that there could be, you know, instruction within that image or there could be, you know, to help you translate things that are within it. Um, you know, or there's there's ways to perform the puzzle or to play the game given to you within the images and the verses conversely. But that's not always going to be the same all the way across the board, I don't think. Um, but starting with the verse, you know, um, we have to kind of accept the pairings now and then, you know, move on from there. So, you know, it seems that a lot of the verses are... Um, not so much instructional, but they're describing a path, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, there is a difference between giving you instructions and directives, which it does do that. There are lines within each verse that, that you have to consider to be directives. Um, you know, seek the columns for the search, and so on. Um, <clears throat> and it seems like they're describing a path. And in the case of Chicago, especially, and, and uh, George did a really cool walkthrough video a long time ago in Chicago of kind of the path that the guys took um, using the verse and the image. And, and it's like on a fundamental level, it's really interesting to see because it shows that the verse describes the path and then the image kind of gives you something to confirm your steps. So in Chicago, for instance, you, you know, you walk a certain you start at a certain place. You, you go a certain distance, and when you look over, you'll see, say, the Bowman, for instance, or the, the Great Lakes mo Monument, like the, the angels or whatever, the fairies, uh, which is actually in the image, right? And then, of course, when you're at the dig spot, boom diggity, there's the, the fence post and then the fixture that was up against the wall. Um, and in a way, it's interesting because the verses, a lot of us have taken liberties with how we read and translate the verses, right? And what I mean by that is that a lot of us have chosen not to just read the verse top to bottom, right? For instance, in Montreal, uh, you know, that one specifically, I think, is, you know, you're kind of standing in the center of a path that you can get to from two different directions. And if you read the verse top to bottom, that's one way of getting to that spot. But if you read the verse bottom to top, it's as though you're coming from the other direction, right? George and I covered this on a, on a, a Sunday fun day, I think it was a little while ago, but there's, <clears throat> excuse me, there seems to be this path being generated um, within the verse. And then as you look around, you know, you'll see things from the image that, you know, that are there. And I think, you know, um, again, like we have a, a plan for a new uh, complete Montreal episode um, in the works and part of it is is talking about how you know like I've always felt that verse 5 specifically is just a verse where you're standing in one spot and when you look around you're going to see all these things right and it tells you how to get to that center spot from two different directions essentially right but you have to read the verse backwards essentially to um, to get from the other direction right and so you know the verses are these paths but I think also, like in the case of Cleveland, so much of what is at the dig spot is in the picture. Like it's, I mean, the wall is center to the entire image, right? And so I think there is a type of instruction within each image that we have to sort of translate into. You know what I mean? Like um, I couldn't tell you what it would be in the Montreal. I think the hands in a lot of ways are instructing. Um, of course, Fenix had that idea a long time ago that it's uh, like on the original Montreal episode that the fingers are pointing to two different sets, of, like two different streets within a set of streets, if that makes sense. And, um, you know, and so there's those instructions. It's basically saying go from here to here, you know, and that's maybe your limits or something like that. Right. Um, 
So it kind of seems like there's there's a path within the verses. Um, that path gets a lot more vague the more lines there are per verse, right? Um, verse eight, for instance, is very much a seems very much like a walking path, uh, you know, like a really long path from point A to point cask, uh, if you will. So, you know, approaching it from strictly from a verse point of view is not a bad way to do things, but I don't think you can do it as independently of the image as you can vice versa, right? Like you can do more with just the image at a, as a starting point than you can with just the verse, in my opinion. Um, you know, and as far as the rest of the book goes, it really raises the question of, you know, if I am taking in everything else from the book, like the back of the book or the front of the book, and, you know, ex exclusive of the litany, of course, because we've already established that that's pretty important. Um, if I'm taking all that in, am I at a disadvantage because I am bogging myself with information? And, and obviously that's going to be a subjective answer. Um, you know, I personally... I don't like noise when it comes to, you know, solving puzzles and stuff like that. I want to know the most important pieces first. And then once I got those figured out, I want to move to the rest of to see what's important. Right. Um, uh, our good friend Carly would tell you that, uh, you know, using the back of the book is important because it can be important because, you know, if you it. He has found ways to confirm points within his theories using the back of the book. A lot of people have, but he's, you know, uh, in in my opinion, he's kind of the um, the back of the book guy, right? Uh, very smart guy, and I, I I do like his work despite the fact that I disagree with a lot of it. Um, but you know, he'd tell you that it's you know taking that information from the back of the book and using it like that is 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 sort of it's an extra set of tools, you know what I mean? Like, you might only need a hammer and a screwdriver, but it, just in case that screwdriver is the wrong one, he's got a box of them sitting here called the back of the book. There's an analogy for you. Um, you know, and so it, it, you can wonder if that's um, super necessary. I wonder how many people actually start with the back of the book. That would be really interesting to see, right? Like, don't even look at the images and stuff yet. Just read the back of the book stuff, maybe read the front of the book stuff, and then... You know, and in that order might be interesting too, but, you know, and then get to the puzzle, right? I wonder if people can, you know, do the, do the opposite as well. Start with the image in verse, right? I mean, that's what, how I think most people do apply the back of the book is they start with the image in the verse. Once they figure some stuff out of there, they might read in the back and either through sheer coincidence or through, um, you know, uh, I'm going to use the word cognitive bias, I guess. They convince themselves that something back there is attached, and, and maybe it is. I, I'm not saying it's not. I, I personally don't um, use anything other than the image and the verse because that's, I mean, we've been told lots that that's all you need um, and whatever else. But, you know, you got to wonder if it's if that's almost too much. You know what I mean? Like if that's too much information. But to each their own and I, and I think that it's important that we you know are open to new ways of doing it right like new ways of of uh, applying the knowledge that we have and uh, I hope that anything I've talked about today uh, helps people in at least getting started you know what I mean it can be really hard sometimes to expect you know even if like in my case I took a like a five six month break I didn't even pick up the book and getting back into it was what that's how I, you know, I did it was I asked myself, how am I going to approach this this time? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, so I hope anything that I've talked about today helps people kind of approach their puzzles with a little more confidence, uh, makes it a little bit easier. And, uh, you know, you, we still enjoy the game. So uh, once again, here's to Arthur. Uh, the community lost somebody very important. And, you know, that hole will never be appropriately filled. So I hope everybody has a great day. If you're in Alberta or Canada, it is cold and snowy. So I hope you all stay warm. And if you live in the United States and haven't got winter yet, it's coming. Bye.